Hi guys, this week I painted a colourful little bee eater in watercolour and I want to show you a few of the different techniques that I used. I recently bought a few sheets of Arsh cold pressed 640 GSM watercolour paper and that's what I used for this painting. It's beautiful to paint on, it's really gorgeous paper. I didn't stretch it because it's really thick, so that saved me some time. I cut a full sheet of it into quarters and I used one of the quarters for this painting. Because this paper is so thick, I don't stretch it. All I do is tape it to my board with some masking tape while I work on it. I'll talk about that later when I show you how I painted it. If I paint on a larger piece of paper, like I did for this stalk painting, I find that I might get a slight bow or a slight bend in the paper here and there, but it's nothing serious. If I know I'm going to work super wet, I might stretch it before I use it, like I stretch the lighter weight paper. Bee eaters can be a little bit tricky to paint because of the different colour transitions on the feathers. You've got these darker brown feathers here merging into the lighter yellow feathers. And you've also got this black ring of feathers around the neck, which can cause difficulty sometimes. So I painted a study before I painted the main painting. I was able to work out how I was going to transition the colours and I could play with the background and a few other different things. And that made my job a whole lot easier when I painted the main painting. I decided to simplify this area down here. On the main painting, I let the wash of paint from the tail flow onto the background and I changed a few different things that I didn't like on the study. For instance, I didn't like what I did here with the black ring of feathers around the neck. So I did that differently on my main painting and there were a few other things that I changed. Okay, let's have a look at it. As I mentioned, I cut a full sheet of Arsh watercolour paper into quarters. This is 640 GSM, which is 300 pound. Because it's so thick, I didn't bother stretching it. I've put some washi tape around the outside edge Washi tape is low tack, so when I tape it to my board to keep it flatter as I paint, this masking tape won't adhere to the paper itself. It'll just go over the top of the washi tape. So when I take it off later, it's not going to damage the paper. This is the photo that I used as a reference for this painting. This was taken by Claudia Brockman and I downloaded it from wildlife reference photos. The bee eater that I used was this one at the top. I've washed in the throat area with some Windsor lemon. I've put a small amount of colour beside the eye. That's Windsor lemon there as well with a touch of aqua green in it. I wanted a more muted yellow for the back feathers. So I've just washed these feathers in here with some Naples yellow. And now I'm starting to deepen the colour in a few areas with some more pigment. I let that completely dry and now I'm re-wetting that area with some water. I want to paint some burnt sienna onto the head and down the back of the neck and I want the burnt sienna to blend into the Naples yellow area. So that's why I've put the water there. The water will help me create a soft paint edge where the burnt sienna meets the Naples yellow. I'm feathering that burnt sienna into that area that I painted before and I'm going to pull it down over the back of the head. I'm using my Da Vinci Maestro brush here. This is a Series 35 brush and the size is a number 8. Keep working it down further and because I've got water on the paper here my paint edges will be soft. The water extends 
further down than the paint and I'll make sure that I keep my paint away from the edge of the water. Now I'm starting to put some darker pigment on there while it's damp. And to do that, all I do is wipe my wet brush over the pigment that's gone hard on my palette. So this is burnt sienna and it's gone hard in here. So I wipe my wet brush over that and it gives me that really dark colour. Pat it onto the damp paper and then I can pull it down. Because my paper's damp here, I get that lovely soft transition between the burnt sienna and the underlying wash of Naples yellow. When I need more paint, I wipe my brush over the pigment again. And then I paint that on where I want it to be darker. Then I wash in the front of the bird with some aqua green. This is a Windsor and Newton colour. I do the same thing that I did with the head. I wiped my brush over the pigment this time to get it darker here. And then before it dries, I drop in some water to create some watercolour blooms, which disturbs the pigment and adds a bit of texture to the front. Here it is after it's dried. So now I want to work on the tail feathers down the bottom. And I was thinking what I'd do is I'd wet all this area here with water and I'd put the paint on and I'd let the paint bleed off the edge of the tail feathers. So I've put some water on the tail feathers and I've taken it out further past them onto the background. I thought that that would make the painting a little bit more interesting. I'll use aqua green again that I used on the front of the bird and I paint that onto the tail feathers and because the background's wet that will bleed off the tail feathers onto the background. I also dropped some water droplets in there to create some watercolour blooms as well. Then I washed in the wing feathers with some burnt sienna and I also put some aqua green up the top there and I let it bleed into the burnt sienna. I painted the eye in with some alizarin crimson and when that was dry I used a waterproof black ink archival pen to draw in the pupil. I painted the black around the eye and now I'm painting it in on this bar across the neck. So I paint that on dry paper and then where I've got it where I want it I get some darker pigment and I put that over the top. Now to get the soft edge where the black meets the aqua green all I do is take my damp brush and I run it along the bottom while the paint's still wet. And that makes the paint bleed down a little bit into those aqua green feathers and that gives me that soft edge there. Now I need a darker colour on those maple yellow feathers on the back. So I've got some quinacridone gold here. I'm going to wet this area with some water so that when I put the quinacridone gold on there I'll have soft paint edges which is what I want here. up the quinacridone gold and then I start to paint it on on the areas where I want the colour to be darker. I run it down the back edge of that feather that's in front 
that gives me an edge on that feather and the paint bleeds across these other feathers because there's water there. This area up here dried before I could get to it so I had to put some more water there. I painted in the brown feathers and then I started to paint these black markings on the flight feathers. I'm using lamp black here, I didn't bother mixing a black and I'm working on dry paper. I leave a little gap of the aqua green underwash showing between each feather and that helps to separate them from one another. For the tail feathers, I didn't want to fuss too much with these, so I dampened each feather separately and then I put some more of the aqua green on there and I wanted the paint to bleed softly across the feather. So I do it feather by feather. I wet one feather first with water and then I pick up some aqua green and I paint it around the edge. And then I let it bleed back over the feather. Now I take the paint out of my brush and use my damp brush to spread that paint out. Sometimes it doesn't sit the way I want it to or I might put the colour on too dark. So I'll use my damp brush to spread the pigment around. Take a bit of pigment off if I need to. I've just wet this one at the front. Now I've got some more of the aqua green paint. And I run that down the edge of it. Then I skip one so that I don't disturb the one I just painted on. I wet it and then I put the aqua green paint down the edge. Skip another feather and I do the same thing. So moving on to the branch, I just needed to fix up this little section here so that it's pointing at the bird. Then I wet it with water, I mixed up some grey paint and I painted that onto the branch while it was wet. I didn't want to fuss with the branch as well, I wanted that to be fairly simple. I wanted to try and leave some white paper showing as well so I didn't completely cover it with paint. Once I got the paint on there, then I came back with my smaller brush and I painted a little bit more colour around the edges. So when I got to the point where I was just about finished, I stood back and had a look and I could see some areas that I wanted to darken the colour slightly. So I went back in and added a bit more colour where I needed it. Here I've got burnt sienna, I'm painting on wet paper, just want to darken up that area there. And then when I was happy with it, I took it off my board and I breathed a sigh of relief. On my computer I've got a really long list of subject suggestions that my patrons have given me and a bee eater was on that list. So this painting will be a full length tutorial on my Patreon site in a month or two. Thank you for watching. As always, a like on this video is appreciated and please subscribe to my channel if you don't already. I'll be back next week with a new tutorial. I'll see you soon. Hi guys, this week, hi guys.
Hi guys, this week I painted a colourful little bee eater in watercolour. Bee eater, I'm saying that really carefully. Bee eater. It's of Arsh cold pressed 640 GSM watercolour paper and that's what I used for this painting. It was... And that's what I used for this painting. It was really beautiful to paint on. I'd forgotten what it was like. And that's what I used for this painting. It's really beautiful to paint on. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I recently bought a few sheets of Arsh cold pressed 640 GSM watercolour paper. And <clears throat> the main painting here, I let the wash of paint from the tail flow onto the background and I changed it. On my computer, I've got a really long list. On my computer, I've got a really long list of subjects and a beta. On my computer, I've got a really long list of subjects. 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 